recording in progress. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to King James Bible University. I am Elder Fields. Glad to have you with us today. As we get ready to start this lesson, we're going to be coming to you from the book of Romans, chapter 20, chapter, chapter 3, verse 23, excuse me. All right. And so with that, um, let's switch to our Bibles and then we'll get started real soon, real quickly here. So we're glad to have you with us. We pray that you be enriched today through the scriptures as we take a look into this word. All right. So Romans 3, 23. And it reads. For all have sinned. And come short. Of the glory of God. Let's read it again. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How did we get there? Now, one thing you have to look at is, is this, the term all, the word all. The word is all is all inclusive, all mankind, all flesh, all people. All living, breathing human beings, all have sinned. That all includes everybody that has lived or ever lived. According to the flesh, we're going to find that out. God says to us through Paul, all have sinned. So that includes your favorite preacher, me, myself, and I, and all of us who are listening. For all have sinned, including come short of the glory of God. Now, with that, let's go to the beginning and take a look and see how do we end up in that place? All right. So let's go to Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness including let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them. Focus verse 27 so God created man in his own image. Now we understand that God is a spirit. John 4, 24, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So our God is a spirit, not flesh. All right. Now let's take a look. Stay in the book of Genesis. We'll go down to the second chapter, verse seven, and take a look here. And it says in the Lord God, the spirit of God, formed man from the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. That breath is spirit. That breath is life. Okay. Now, let's keep moving. Let's go to Genesis 5, verse 1 and 2. Looking at man. It says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. 
in the day that God created man. So God created man. When we look at Adam, which means mankind on the same day. In the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Verse two, male and female created he them and blessed them, gave them wisdom and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. So right there, that throws a wrench in a whole lot of theology because the Bible is not theological. Theology is the philosophy of men, so-called Christians. It's confusion. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. So that help meet that God made for Adam was not the woman, the female. It was the spirit because woman also means spirit. Let's look there real quick before we move forward. Just so you won't be confused. Christians have you thinking that uh, God made a woman. And the woman is the helpmeet, meaning a female. Genesis 2.20. Adam gave all, gave names to all cattle. Now you got to remember, Genesis 5.1 and 2 just told us God created them male and female and called their name Adam at the same time. All right? So this is, this is mankind. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, mankind, there was not help. There was not found a help meet for him. And the spirit of God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and in replacement thereof. And the rib which the spirit of God had taken from man, he made a woman and brought her into man. Now, God gave Adam male and female Spirit of wisdom to guide them. That's what that's talking about. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. It says, Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Creator with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek Him. For He will be found of them that tempt Him not. And showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. For forward thoughts separate from God, including his power, when it is tried, reprove the unwise. For unto a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. Remember, God made man a living soul, so he gave him wisdom. Does that help me? Nor dwell in the body that's subject to sin. So before Adam sinned, in chapter 3, he had this wisdom, this spirit with him. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from the thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness come in. For wisdom, let me read verse 6. For wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer, a liar of his words. For God is witness of his reins, his spirit, his heart and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. All right, let's move on back. Actually, let's stay over here for a moment. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. All right, so that help me was the spirit of wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. Let's go down to verse 23. For God created man, Adam, to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. So Adam was created a living soul. He was spirit. That's the image. Now we got to find out about this immortal aspect. Wisdom of Solomon 1.15 Let's back it up. For righteousness is immortal. Let 
That righteousness is that which comes from the spirit of God, from the word of God. So as long as Adam was obedient to the voice of the spirit of God, he would be fine. But we have the problem, the dilemma. We go back to Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hmm, how did this happen? Let's take a look at, first of all, Genesis. It's not in my notes, but let's go there. Genesis 3, I'm going to move this on kind of expeditiously. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Spirit of God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Here comes the lie, ye shall not surely die. Then he adds on to the lie. For God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes, your understanding shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He's pulling them into the dark place, sin. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she wanted that knowledge and that it was pleasant to the eye, to her understanding and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat. She learned the way of this serpent and gave it to her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. They were now in sin. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. It's a sin problem. That's the shift right there. Disobedience started with an evil thought. And concluded in an action called iniquity. They took and learned of that serpent. Now, speaking of sin in the flesh, this is what the flesh will always produce, brothers and sisters. All right, people, you may not have heard this. Maybe you were sitting in a Christian church all your life, but this is what the flesh produces. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest or made known, which are these. This is all that the flesh produces. When the flesh is allowed to be itself is going to produce these works either physically or spiritually now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions and heresies envyings murders drunkenness revelings and such alike of which i tell you before as i have told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If we operate, live, and maneuver in the flesh, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. Point blank. No flesh is going to get there. And these are the works of the flesh. So once Adam sinned, start, remember sin is, it starts with a thought. Then it produces a work called iniquity. The works of sin. Let's go in this timeline and move forward a little bit. Genesis 6, 5. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. He didn't create man and wicked, but because man sinned, then wickedness began to move and grow. It got great. <laughs> so God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of the heart of his heart was only evil continually as the flesh. Remember wisdom of Solomon chapter one. Those thoughts that evil imagination wisdom will depart from it. Spirit of Christ going to leave you. All right. These evil imaginations and wicked thoughts, that's sin. Let me give you an example. Matthew 5, 28. 
But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. It's a thought. Let's go to Romans 1. We're dealing with all have sinned. Romans 1, 21. And it's the same way if a woman look upon a man, it's the same. All right. Romans 1, 21. Let's take a look here. Verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We have no excuses because that when they knew God, God made himself known to man, to Adam. God made himself known to the children of Israel later on. All right. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their thoughts and their foolish hearts was darkened. That's that dark place. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So if we trust in the flesh, we trust in the ways of men, we're going to always end up the fool. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man. Remember, Satan said you should be his gods. So men are worshiping the flesh and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. There goes that sin to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So when we look at today's society, man, it's like sin is on steroids because the flesh is just allowed to just, you know, <laughs> everything carnal, 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 carnal. You see the works. It says, who changed the truth of God into a lie. The truth of God is that you're a man or you're a woman and you can't change your sex. That's the truth. God made you a man, you're a man. No matter what you cut off, or put on. God made you a woman, you're a woman. You can't change it. But today's world will tell you that's a lie. That's an example. It says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worse than served the creature, the flesh, more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause... God gave them up to vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lusts one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly. All these are the ways of the flesh receiving in themselves the re that recompense of their error, which was meat and the flesh will lead us into abominable acts. If we keep, if we live therein. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, this is the problem. God gave them over to be reprobate in the mind, to be a reprobate mind, excuse me, to do those things which are not convenient. Here's the works of the flesh. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable and unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them, that is the ways of the flesh. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 8, 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. So if you desire God, you're going to separate from sin. Okay, 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. He don't desire the ways of God. See, our days in this flesh are numbered. They're, they're short. It's temporal. But we got to look toward the eternal side. OK. 
Okay. Let's go to Romans 6, 23. Excuse me, Romans 6, 23, and it says, for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So let's look there. Romans 6, 23. Remember, all have sinned. And this is what sin produces. A compensation package called death. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin, the compensation, the payment for sin is death. That's a complete thought. We can escape death through the gift of God, which is eternal life through salvation and on our way, our creator. Now, let's take a look here. The death is talking about, remember, all flesh is going to die. So that death, that wage or that payment for sin, which is death, actually is dealing with the second death. This is what we want to escape. This is where, this is where the flesh will lead us. Revelations 20, verse number 14. And, the, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. All right. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. That is now when we hear the truth and we respond. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be called, they shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We got to try to, we got to labor to be part of his first resurrection that we can escape the second death. All right. Uh, Revelations 21 verse number eight. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, as we saw in Romans one and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, excuse me, in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. That's the wage for sin. That's the wage for carnal thinking, living, and being. Death is going to always lead to this second death. All right? Let's take a look at another verse real quick. Let's see. Let me see Matthew. Let me see if I want this one. Matthew 6. So our focus is all have sinned. Actually, I'm going to move on from that. All right. So let's take a look here. Matthew 6, 2. It says, therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have the glory of men. So the flesh wants its own glory. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And the end of the reward of the glory of the flesh is death. You contrast that with what we should do if we do alms, we do good deeds in secret unto the Spirit of God, unto our Father, if we see it in secret, he's rewarded thee openly. That's leading to life. Now, let's go to Ephesians 2 for a second. Ephesians 2, 5. It says, even when we were dead in sin. So as everybody, we were born in this flesh, we were born dead. Dead to the spirit of God, dead to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But we can be made alive together through Christ, through the word, through the spirit of God. But right now we're just dealing with this death sentence that's on the flesh. Okay. And so by mercy, we can get over there, but we have something to do. We got to give up this flesh. Show you something real quick. Hebrews 10, 5. 
Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared. So we got to give up the flesh. We got to give up the body, all right, of flesh. Because if we stay living according to the deeds of the flesh, it's going to end up into the lake of fire. Romans 5, 12. Let's keep going. It says, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. We saw that back in, in uh, Genesis 3. And death by sin. So death came by sin. And so death passed upon all men. Paul hits it again. Same focus as Romans 3.23, for all have sinned. So if a person tell you they have not sinned, they're a liar. All have sinned. All flesh. Sin is imputed to all flesh. Okay. Sin is imputed to all flesh. Let's keep looking. Understand this flesh deal that we have to deal with. Let's go to Sirach 14.7 in the Apocrypha. Sirach 14.17 rather. It says, all flesh waxes old as a garment. For the covenant from the beginning is that thou shalt die to death. In the beginning, after Adam sinned, what did God give him? Let's go to Genesis 3. What did he give them? Genesis 3.21. It says, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Spirit of God make coats of skin and clothe them. So God clothed us in flesh so we could see sin. Every time we look in the mirror, lost sheep of the house of Israel always tells us, go look in the mirror when you get out the shower. When we look in the mirror, we shouldn't see anything. But that physical image, that physical body is sin. It's the image of sin. All right? For all flesh waxes old as a garment. For the covenant from the beginning is, thou shalt die to death. All flesh is appointed to death. That's why we get old in this body. Now, let's take a look at something. I found this very interesting. Let's go to Isaiah 28. Remember, all have sinned. Those preachers in those churches are leading many to sin, even deeper levels of sin, because they're not teaching the truth. And Christ is not even in that building. Isaiah 28, verse number 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Spirit of God, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is synonymous with the people, the children of Israel. These leaders, these teachers, these preachers, these pastors are ruling them. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. So when you go to the building, they'll promise you life, but the doctrine they're teaching is a covenant with death, and they're, agree they're in agreement with hell because they have despised the law of God. They don't teach according to the ways of truth. They teach according to the doctrine of men. So when you sit under the doctrine of men, you're making a covenant with death and an agreement with hell. It says, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. That's what they say. We're safe in this building. For we have made lies our refuge. And on the falsehood have we hid ourselves. Even though you may not think it's a lie. Christian doctrine is a lie. Because it teaches faith in flesh. And it removes you from the spirit of God. It's a bait and switch. All right. Let's go to Job Chapter number 34, dealing with flesh. The world's always pushing the flesh. We have to be crucifying the flesh. <laughs> Look here. 
all flesh shall perish together, including man shall turn again under dust because we came out of the ground. So that's why we should not put confidence in the flesh. It's going to perish. But within your body, there is a spirit and a soul that will either go one or two places. If it's connected to the flesh, when the flesh dies, that soul will go to condemnation, second death. If that spirit in that man is connected to the truth and he's overcome sin in the flesh and offered his body a living sacrifice, holding acceptable unto God, which is his reasonable service, which we should be doing, and we serve the Most High with all our might according to the covenant that he's established with us and he established with our forefathers, and we do it the way he said in the scriptures, then if our spirit is attached to him when we die, our spirit will go back to the Lord. But if our spirit is attached to the flesh, the flesh go to the dust and that spirit of man goes to the lake of fire. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. It's actually, sec first, yeah, 1 Peter chapter 1. Remember, all have sinned. When you're sitting in that Sunday church and they told you Sunday is the new Sabbath, you're sitting in sin because there ain't no new Sabbath. God set the seventh day apart and made it holy. Now let's look at 1 Peter 1.24. For all flesh is as grass and the glory of man as a flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. So flesh is going to diminish. Let's pick up verse 25. It's not in the note, but let's read it. But the word of the creator endure forever. The flesh is temporal. It's going to wait, fade. It gets old. It gets weak. It dies. And this is the word which the message is preached unto you. So the word of the spirit of God endure forever. That's what we have to be connected to, not the flesh. Now, they told you in the church that flesh is in heaven. One of the big lies, Enoch went to heaven. They don't know that Enoch died. They'll tell you blood is in heaven. They're lying. And they'll be talking about, I plead the blood of Jesus. A bunch of confusion. Let's look at here. Not knowing that blood deals with a lifestyle. Not literal, physical blood. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Full thought. There is no flesh in heaven. There is no blood in heaven. It cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither do corruption inherit in corruption. Flesh is corruptible. So can anything tied to flesh get into the kingdom? No. There has to be a change. We got to wait from death of sin to righteousness. Okay, let's go to second Ezra. Take a look at this. Second Ezra is in the Apocrypha. It's the same Ezra that spoke to us in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Second Ezra chapter number three. Let's look at Adam. Start at four. Ezra is speaking of the Lord. He says, O Lord, who bearest rule, thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth. Remember, God said it, and the Spirit of God performed it. And that thyself alone, and commandest the people. Verse 5, and gavest the body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thy hands, and did breathe unto him the breath of life. That's that spirit of life. And he was made, a, made living before thee. So that body is flesh. There's no life without spirit. All right. And thou leadest him into paradise, Eden, which thy right hand hath planted before ever the earth came forward. And unto him thou gavest commandments to love thy way. And this is where he went astray. He didn't love the way of truth which he transgressed, he forgot, he forsook it, he abandoned it, and immediately thou appointed death in him, 
and in his generations of whom came nations, tribes, peoples, and kindreds out of number. That's what happened to us. That's why we're in this situation we're in. And every people walked after their own will. That's a, that's a big problem, my friend. Self-will. And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee. Those wonderful things are acts of sin and rebellion and, and evil. And despised thy commandments. And again, in the process of time, thou broughtest the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroyest them. And it came to pass in every of them that as death was to Adam, so was the flood to these. Like today, there's a flood of doctrines. A flood of information that leads to death that's being pushed. So we have a major problem if we choose to continue in the flesh for the flesh is sin. Remember, he gave them coats of skin so we could recognize sin all right let's go to second chronicles we're just dealing with the fact that all have sin nobody can say walk around with their nose in the air thinking they are made of gold and diamonds all have sinned but we got to put away sin In 2 Chronicles 25, verse 4, we see Amaziah performing an act. And this is just a little something I want to add here. Verse 4, but he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law in the book of Moses. Moses means the word of truth. Wherefore, excuse me, where the spirit of God commanded, saying, the fathers shall not die for, their, for the children. Neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man, male or female, shall die for his own sin. You find that in Deuteronomy 24. Remember, the wages of sin is death. The flesh has to be put away. So a man can't die for your sins. Check it out. And the fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Every man, male or female, shall be put to death for their own sin sin but in the church they'll tell you that a man died for your sin but the law says that every man shall die for his own flesh all right remember Death is appointed to the flesh. So there's a payment. If we kill it in this life and overcome it in this life and submit to Christ, we can get life eternal. If we walk in it in this life and die in it in this life, we're going to reap the compensation of death, eternal fire. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians and see what Paul says about this. 1 Thessalonians 5.9. It says, for God have not appointed us, he's speaking to the children of Israel, to wrath, to his fury, but to obtain salvation by our creator, salvation, the anointed way. This is not talking about a man. It's talking about a way, a lifestyle, through the word of God. You can find on King James Bible University a teaching about Jesus or Jehovah that hit the other day. Go check it out. All right. Now, let's go back to. So God hasn't appointed us. Eternal wrath. 
unless we stay in the flesh. But we can obtain salvation, which is deliverance, if we shift from the flesh to obedience and get ourselves back in remembrance of the covenant and do what our first works we're supposed to do. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Remember, all have sinned. The greatest preacher you know. He in flesh, he got sin. The newborn baby that cracks out of the womb crying. Sin is imputed to that flesh. All right. Let me lie, let me see something. I want to prove something real quick. Let's go to Romans 9, 6. It says, not as though the word of God have taken on effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, according to the flesh, are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 8 is what I want to get to. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. See, if you live after this flesh, my brother, my sister, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise accounted for the seed. Look at verse 11. Look at actually verse 10. Because remember, Isaac came by promise to Sarah. It says, and not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, Isaac, only our father, even our father, Isaac, he's speaking to the children of Israel, talking to us, black folk, for the children being not yet born, having done, neither having done good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election may stand not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her that the elder should serve the younger. It is written, uh, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. God knew the heart of Esau in the womb, that it was going to be wicked. That's why he was red, covered in sin. This is the allegory between the flesh and the spirit. Jacob overcame the flesh, had his way changed from Jacob to Israel, a prince with God, a servant of God. Serving Yahweh. Esau stayed in the flesh, so he's rejected. Jacob overcame the flesh, became Israel. We got to understand that. We got to overcome the flesh. Back to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. We're not in ignorance. We, we're hearing word today. We've been hearing word over here at King James Bible University, so we're not in ignorance says that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light, of knowledge, and of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. We were in darkness when we lived in disobedience and rebellion against God's word. Actually, I'm going to shift because I got to come back to this verse. Let's go to 2nd Ezra. We were in darkness. <laughs> I like that word. So we got to come out of the darkness, out of the sin business, out of the flesh, and move with God. So Second Ezra, this is where I wanted to go. I uh, misread my note. Chapter 7, verse 7. Remember, there is a path we got to get on, the way of the Spirit, the way of Christ. It's narrow. Is straight. Flesh versus spirit. All right. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to start at seven, but let me back up to verse number 
three. And I said, speak on my guide. And he said unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow, including like a river. Who then would go into the sea to look upon it and rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? There is also another thing. A city is built and set up on a broad field and it's full of all good things. We're reading to verse 10. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. There's that battle. Like as if there were fire on the right hand and on the left deep water. You got, all, you got these things we got to walk through and overcome. Verse 8. The only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could only one man go at once. The way to salvation, only you can only go. You can't take your whole family. You can give them information, but you can only go. You can't take the whole house. You can only go, but you can give them information. They got to make a decision. All right. He says, if the city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, that city is dealing with eternal life. If he never pass, shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Our portion is we got to go through this journey and we got to deal with this flesh and conquer it and overcome it if we want to get the inheritance of salvation. It's our portion. Now let's keep reading about this portion. He says, because for their sakes, Israel's sakes, I made the world. When Adam transgressed my statutes, when Adam forgot my commandments, my way, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils, dangers, and very painful. For the entrance of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. He was put in a world where he could just eat the truth and be all right. But once he sinned, it got tight. If then ye that live, talking to us, labor not to enter into these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. Now, therefore, why disquiet thyself, seeing thou art but a corruptible man? That's the problem. All flesh is corrupted. Man is corrupt according to the flesh. That's why we have coats of skin. And he says, why art thou moved? Why art perfection of beauty thou moved, whereas thou perfection of beauty but mortal? We're mortal. Verse 16, why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come rather than what is present? So in the world, everybody's living for what they see instead of thinking about what's coming down the line. The flesh will have you focus on temporal things, whereas the spirit of God and the word of God will cause us to focus on eternal things. The temporal thing is going to get us destroyed. The eternal things of salvation and the word and the way of truth and the covenant will lead to life. So he says, why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come. We better be thinking about what's coming rather than what is present. What we going to eat, what we going to sleep, what we going to wear. Then I answered, then answered I and said, O Lord, thou bearest rule. Thou hast, thou hast ordained in thy law. So he comes back to the law, which the Christian preacher tell you don't exist no more. Thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things. Talk about eternal life but that the ungodly should perish. That's in the law. So we got a shift. Nevertheless, the righteous should suffer straight things and hope for the wide. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the wide. If you're living in the flesh and you're getting hit and we're getting hit, uh, hit for it and we don't change, we're not going to see the kingdom. We're going to see where the flesh goes. But if we go through these straight things and be hated of men for Christ's sake and, and, and endure hardness as a good soldier, we can hope for salvation. Verse 19. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. 
and none that have understanding above the highest. So your little fleshly carnal thoughts that they gave you in seminary or that some of us picked up in high school and college is nothing. All right. Stephen Hawkins mentality is nothing. All right. There's no judge above God. None that have understanding above the most high. For there be many that perish. Check it out now. There be many that perish in this life. This is an ancient statement, but it's still true right now. Many are dying in this life. And the reason being is we talk about among the children of Israel specifically. The reason being is because they despise the law of God that is set before them. God set a law, a record, a commandment, a path, a way, a covenant before the children of Israel. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob and his statutes and judgments, doctrines and teachings unto Israel. He have not so dealt with any nation. As for his doctrines and teachings, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Spirit of God. He gave our forefathers and us this truth. And we have it in a book called the King James Bible, 1611 with the Apocrypha. But many of our people reject the Bible, the King James Bible, especially the Apocrypha, and they walk after other doctors and other books and they hold on to what men are saying, not knowing you better get this knowledge that's written in the book of remembrance, the book of the Lord. Remember Isaiah 34, 16 commands us, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Let's go there. Then I got to move back into this lesson. 34.16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, the Spirit of God, and read. None, no one of these shall fail. Nothing that God has declared will fail. None shall want her mate, for my mouth that have commanded, and his spirit have gathered them. There's only one book, the book of the Lord. All these other false books, they're going to fail. Isaiah 55. I think it's 11. So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. So we got to get that word in us. But there be many in that life, and many that perish in this life because they despise the law of God which is set before them. It's been set before us. But we've been told. We're in a new covenant. Listen to these dumb preachers. For God have given straight commandments to such as came what they should do to live. It's in the book. It's in the law. It's in the faith. It's in the obedience. The man Jesus was showing us how to live it out. But the spirit that was, in, that was abiding in him was doing the work. He submitted to it. All right. For God have given straight commandments to such as came, what sh they should do to live. So we got to follow the example, not the flesh, even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Now, here's our problem. It says, nevertheless, they were not obedient to him. The man, Yahawashai, was obedient to him, showing us what we need to do. But contrast men like King Saul, they weren't obedient. Many of us were not obedient. And this is what happens today, like that silly, dumb dog that said uh, Jesus was 85% error. <laughs> but they speak against him and imagine vain things. So they speak against salvation, not the man against the spirit of God, against the word of God, against Jehovah. And then they preach these vain messages and people sit there and get deceived. And deceive themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the most high, he is not and knew not his ways. See, this is the problem. But his law they have, have they despised, hated, and denied his covenants. His statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. That's what the flesh could lead us to this kind of life. Despising the covenants. Despising the law. How many times... Have you heard, say, for instance, a simple 
we're not even dealing with a, the, this particular principle on a spiritual side because there is a spiritual side and there's a natural side. The spiritual side, we're not going to deal with. We're going to just deal with the natural side. When you go to church, they'll have a shrimp boil and a gumbo plate. But the Bible says, These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters. They have a catfish fry. A catfish don't have fins and scales. We ain't supposed to eat it. In the season in the river shall ye eat them. So we can only eat those things in the waters that have fins and scales. We shouldn't be eating crawfish and lobsters and shrimp and all them things that our people tend to love, thinking they live in big scale living up and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters any living and of any living thing which is in the waters they shall be an abomination to you they shall be most hated to you they shall not be they shall be excuse me even an abomination unto you ye shall not eat of their flesh but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination but then they'll give you a whole bowl uh, of shrimp gumbo or a whole plate of uh, oysters on a half shell and then some foolish preacher tell you, God cleaned everything, so you just pray over it and eat it, and it's blessed. No, we're just dealing with the carnal side, or I mean the foundational side, not even the spiritual side of this. So what makes you think you're going to get, you despise this commandment, eating catfish, po' boys, and lobster bisque, think you're going to get the kingdom of God? But his law have they despised. The flesh despises the way of truth and denied his covenants. And his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. We got to perform what God said perform. According to the spirit. We can't be doing these ungodly things thinking we're going to inherit life eternal. So in the Christian church, they're, they're creating us to be, they created us to be more sinful. Saying there is no law. So you put away with these words and then people sin in every day. Gathering in a place that's abominable. God don't dwell in buildings made with hands. All those things are works of the flesh. But we've become addicted to it and we got to separate from the flesh. All right. Let's go to first Thessalonians. So all that sin. I'm just showing you what sin is. Yeah, that shrimp. Sandwich is sin. It's violate. It's, it's, it started with an evil thought. Somebody told you it was good. They put some seasoning on it, and you ate a cockroach, and now you're addicted to it. You ate the, you ate the, the, the slop that the slave master gave us, and then now we even made it a delicacy called soul food, and we eat on a bundle of things like pork products, pork guts that used to carry feces and. Our people talking about his chitlins and they put hot sauce on it, just condemning themselves, even naturally, which is crazy. And the condemnation is they have a desire to eat it. When God forbid that we should even touch the carcass of that animal, they have a desire to eat it. That's sin. Evil thought. All because some slave master threw, it, threw us that slop and then we got accustomed to eating it and now we try to make it something good instead of throwing it away and turning away from it. The flesh loves to sin. The way of sin is death. These are the works of the flesh, my brother, my sister. Now remember, we were, in, we were in Thessalonians a while back and it says God has not appointed us to wrath. First Thessalonians 5, 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, of knowledge. We're getting this knowledge over here at King James Bible University. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. That's the call of the day. Let's watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They're in ignorance. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. He's talking spiritually. You sleeping in that big church. 
Listen to that preacher. He got you comfortable. You sleep concerning the things of truth. And that comfortability in the flesh in that church is going to get you destroyed. You better run up out of there. But let us who are of the day be sober, be clear in our mind, putting on the breastplate of faith. These are the things of spirit and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our creator. Salvation, the anointed way, speaking of the spirit of God, that almighty word that came down from heaven. All right. Let's go back to uh, second Ezra seven and let's pick up at verse number 28. We're going to be out of here real soon. Now, this is just a little bonus. They will tell you that the Apocrypha is not part of the Bible. That's another lie. It is part of the Bible. It's the bridge that bridges the Old and New Testament. Now, second Ezra, this is the same Ezra, says something. He says, for my son, Jesus, Spirit of Christ is speaking to him. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. So there's no 400 years of silence. And after these years shall my son Christ die, and all men shall have life. Now, Christ is the Spirit, is the Word. I'm going to show you how that worked out. Go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon, 18, 15. Thine almighty word, that same word whereby he created the heaven and earth, thine almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne. As comparing a fierce man of war into the midst of a land of people of destruction. We were set for destruction. God sent his word down to counsel us. To direct us. That word is spirit and is life. It's not flesh. That word that came out of heaven in the days of the man Jesus resided upon him. Because he was like Moses. Prophet. Deuteronomy 18, 18. This is not in my notes, but let me go there. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So that prophet becomes a mouthpiece. He's speaking what the spirit of God is commanding. He's not speaking of his own accord. The man Jesus is simply a prophet. Showing us how we should follow the spirit of God, but he's speaking the word of God. But the Christian church had us worshiping flesh and not aligning ourselves to the spirit of truth. So in order to deliver us, God sends his almighty word. Which is spirit. Out of heaven. Down to wage war against the flesh to deliver us because we're set for destruction. So the word comes to make a separation. Remember, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. All have sinned. We have a problem. That problem is the flesh. We have to get the flesh out of the way. We got to mortify the deeds of the body. We got to put the flesh down. And we got to walk with the spirit of God. So don't let don't let a man fool you. All them big time preachers taking that taking that money. Living fat off the backs of those congregants. <laughs> they have deceived them. They're leading them into deeper sin because they're teaching them idolatry. So when that preacher walks in the building and everybody stands up on their feet. They're idol worshipers put in flesh where it don't belong. But hear what the word of God says. I counsel thee by of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. 
See, our riches is not in the flesh. It's in the spirit. We got to overcome that flesh. And white raiment, that means pure covering of righteousness, that thou mayest be clothed and that thy shame, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. So we got to get rid of that flesh because all have sinned. And anoint thy understanding with eye salve that thou mayest see. We got to get understanding through the word. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Here's the word of wisdom. Be zealous, therefore, and remember, repent. Remember, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, open your heart to obedience, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcome it will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So this ain't talking about flesh overcome. Flesh had to be put down. It's through the Spirit of Christ that we overcome. So even though all have sinned, we don't have to remain there. So our big problem is the flesh. The rest of our days, we got to work to put this flesh down, keep it down, subjugate it to the truth. The first step you can do, my brother and sister, I'm about to close out. Leave that church building. You stay in that church building? It's keeping you locked in sin. Even though it's promising salvation, it's keeping you locked in sin my friend leave that church come to the word come to the truth you don't need to be gathering under condemnation every time people go to church i think about it when we was in church and when some of us i used to be a pastor a preacher we was gathering the condemnation three times a week condemning ourselves going into a building three times a week thinking we were serving God in our ignorance, not realizing that we were condemning ourselves, but praise God for the truth. We walked up out of there. And here's the proof. Acts 7, and I got to get out of here. 48. How be it? The most high dwelling not in temples made with hands, as said the prophet. Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, said the, the creator? Or what is the place of my rest? He ain't resting in a building. So when you go into these buildings, God is not there. The father's not there because he, that's a whole nother story. And then Christ is not there. I'm going to show you Christ ain't there either. That's why the first thing you got to do is run about them church buildings. Hebrews 9.24, and we're going to close with this. For Christ is not entered into holy places made with hands. They told you that building is the house of God. Christ ain't there. They'll tell you they'll bring Christ in there. How you, can you bring the spirit of God where he said he ain't going to come? It's, it's, it's ridiculousness. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. That spirit, that, the almighty word that came down out of heaven into the midst of a land of destruction, that spirit, that word went back. That spirit went back. To the holy place, separated place, which is spiritual. And now he sends his word down through men to preach and teach the truth. But you're not going to find it in a building. But you found it when you came over to the King James Bible University, lost sheep of the house of Israel. You're getting understanding. So with that, I'm going to leave you with that thought. Man, we were created to be immortal made to be the image of Christ. But yet, we're wrapped in flesh. The image of sin. 
It's now time to conquer that. We got to kill it every day. Number one priority every day, kill the desire and the will of sin. This is King James Bible University. I am Elder Fields. And with that, I bid you a shalom. And don't let nobody tell you anything different. All flesh is sin. But salvation is through the spirit of God and his word. Shalom.